All right, how's it going, y'all? So this right here is the new 45 Drives Home Lab HL15 2.0. It is basically a fully built out chassis server that is completely customizable. And I don't know of anything that's really equivalent on the market today and especially useful for people who are trying to build their own servers without having to do a ton of the legwork themselves for actually like sourcing components from eBay and duct taping stuff together and having a very nice chassis built out there specifically for people who are trying to get large, large storage arrays. For me, this product right here fills a really large hole in the market for my clients. Having a NAS that is able to store 15 drives while also being able to run ZFS is really valuable. Having something that just pre-built shipped to you is not something that's easy to find, especially for those people who do not need a server screaming in their living room, but rather need something that's fairly quiet and can store a whole lot of data, all while being a self-contained package. Disclaimers, I did get 45 drive to send this to me for free, but there are no strings attached or anything like that. And they don't have any control over this video and it's a completely independent review. All right. So with that out of the way, let's get into this thing. So this thing right here is the HL 15 from 45 drives and it is their new version 2.0. There are a lot of different ways to configure this thing. If you want, they will just send you the chassis without a motherboard or power supply or you can get it like I got it, where it's fully configured, all ready to go. If you get it fully configured with a motherboard, it supports a AMD 7002 series processor, and these epics are super fast, very performant CPUs, and so you're going to be able to get whatever you need out of it, and it supports up to 512 gigs of RAM. You probably have heard of 45 drives before from really their massive storage servers. They make storage servers up to 60 drives now and the exact same way. Basically, they send you a package that is fully configured, ready to go, but at the same time being customizable. And what they really focus on is they always have a direct wire backplane. So they do not use SAS expanders. So every single one of these drives up front has its own lane to a PCIe card and for just 15 drives, nice thing is they've got a 16 port HBA. And so we're only taking up one slot. So this thing, as the name suggests, can store 15 drives. And the way they actually work is a very interesting, completely toolless, completely caddy list design that I've not seen before, but actually works quite well, where you just simply slot it in. And it does feel like you're forcing it, but you just slot them in directly like that. By far the easiest drives I've had to get in before. And so far I've had no issues with it whatsoever. And so every single one of these 15 drives up front is then directly wired into this HBA back here, all while leaving six more 16 wide PCIe slots for whatever you want to do. And that is really the nice thing about these two AMD epics is just the massive number of PCIe lanes and just the expandability for a server like this. You will absolutely be able to get a similar server from Dell, HP, Supermicro. But what really sets this stuff apart is one, the ability to actually buy on the smaller scale for a very good price. And also the fact that you are not going to have a system with screaming fans expecting to be in a server rack here. Overall, this thing has been very quiet. And finally, the last part about this that's phenomenal is the expandability of a system like this. There are not a lot of servers that you can just buy that you can wire up however you want to, where you could throw a GPU in here. You've got a power supply that you just can add in a card there and expand out however you need to. The entire chassis is very open and really just expandable. And while it is not cheap at 2,300 US dollars minimum, if you want the fully configured ready to go thing, minus drives, it is still, I think, very good value because there's really nothing it's competing with in the market. Dell is not going to sell you a server like this. And if they were, you can bet it's going to be a lot more expensive than 2,300 US dollars. It's also going to be one where if you buy it through them, you are going to have to fill at least half the drive bays with Dell drives upcharging you. There's not a lot of stuff out there where you can just buy it and build it yourself and really customize it however you'd like to. And also having that massive expandability in the side with 
really your own ability to have replacement parts. You could probably source and build a server similarly. I personally have gone on eBay and found a lot of server components and put it together and my NAS that I built from used server equipment probably came in cheaper than this after all was said and done and it's got a lot more RAM and a lot more horsepower than this. But at the same time, that was a completely used system. I ran into a ton of problems with it because of old driver compatibility and trying to get everything to work together nicely. And it draws probably four or five times as much power as this because it's using those older components. And so having something like this, where it is quite quiet while also being completely shipped ready to go is something I've been looking for for people who need to store a whole lot of data but do not necessarily have a great understanding on how to build servers. And that's why I think this thing is great and I probably will be deploying it to clients who need something like this. With Synology's lockdown of the drives, getting the over 100 terabyte servers to video production houses gets a lot more expensive. Having something like this where you can throw in the new 28 terabyte drives and 15 of them means you can have a massive file server here that doesn't take up a ton of room, has actual feet, and so it can be a desktop unit without screaming and without having to go and source and build out your own system makes this a very, very, very compelling system. The chassis is built like an absolute tank. They've got this new magnetic dust filter up front for easy cleaning and removal. And while the fans themselves come out of the box very quiet, you can also upgrade it with Noctua fans directly from them. The entire thing is built out to be just super premium. And that is even what it is described on the site. And everything is laid out very nicely and it is going to be really easy to expand. So as you can see right here, there are two rungs of fans up at the very front and then right behind the drives to push all the air out. And we are only using a single one of these PCIe lanes. And so you've got a whole lot of extra throughput in PCIe expandability for whatever you need to do. You can throw a 100 gig NIC in there if you need to, or even a GPU because this power supply, it ships with the extra cables. So you are just ready to go and plug in whatever next thing you need here. With the ability to do PCA bifurcation, you can sit down and you can throw in those adding cards that have four by NVMe slot and throw a few of them in here and build an NVMe editing pool and then use the mechanical hard drives for an archive. There's a whole lot of stuff you can do with this thing because it is just out of the box expandable. The ASRock motherboard comes with a management interface, which is pretty standard and it does give you actual video out, which is always nice. And it comes with two 10 gigabit NICs RJ45 on there. They ship out of the box with Rocky Linux and their own custom management interface called Houston UI. If you've ever used Cockpit on Linux before, Houston is really just a customized version of Cockpit, an extended version of a Cockpit. And one really nice thing that this has specifically with Cockpit is it actually directly integrates with the hardware if you go in and get the fully configured system right here. So it will tell you which drive is which. So if you've ever dealt with TrueNAS on a custom build server before, and you've had to figure out, oh, which drive is failing and had to start looking up serial numbers, here, you don't have to do any of that. You literally just see the exact chassis indicator and say, oh, it is in bay three. And you get the overall look of the entire system there. You also get to see all of the components and which cards they're plugged into, which lanes they're plugged into and it makes it honestly really easy to manage. If you've ever used Cockpit before, you know it's very easy. Now, it is also just a server. It is just a computer and a motherboard. So if you also really want to go the TrueNAS route, there's nothing stopping you here. The nice thing about ZFS is as well, you can actually go back and forth. If you want to test them out, you can make sure you've got a compatible ZFS between the two of them, and you can easily dual boot your pool between 45 Drive's Houston Rocky Custom OS and standard TrueNAS scale. And so you have so many open options here because at the end of the day, it's just a server. There's no overall custom firmware on there that's forcing you to go in one specific direction. All right, so without further ado, 
I'm gonna go ahead and slot some drives into this thing, and we're gonna go ahead and check out the overall Houston system, and overall, would I use it over TrueNAS scale? And the answer really comes down to who I'm deploying this for. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and we'll go ahead and just boot her on up. All right, so now, just gone ahead, booted it on up, and it's actually running right next to me, and you can't hear it at all, which is absolutely great for a rack mount server. Then to access it, all you do is you find the IP address and you go to port 9090 of it. This is the default if you wanna go the Houston direction. You just find the IP address, colon 9090, and there is the default username and password on the side. I've already been testing it out, so I had my own account created. So now this right here is a thing called cockpit. And specifically, it is a customized version with a bunch of add-ins that makes it Houston. And Houston is basically maintained by 45 drives. And as we can see over here, it integrates very nicely with the overall system. Just need to give myself admin access. And we can see the motherboard. And you can see every single component plugged into it, where it is, what is filled, and all of the specific pieces. Having features like this, where I can look right here and see if, oh, hey, there should be a dim right there, but it doesn't appear to be registering, is really, really, really valuable. Having everything as a clear as day indicator of exactly what's going on is great. Now, one thing I did view right here is there is in fact a slot M2 underscore one that does not appear to be showing up there. I actually did get this kind of early release, so this may still be getting improved. Basically, this is the new version, the HL2 that just came out, and I've been running a very much a beta version before it was sent out, so I'll chalk it up to that. When you're looking about whether or not you want to keep Houston or go the more traditional TrueNAS scale route, the big advantage to something like Houston is that tight integration right here. The ability to see every single one of these pieces all in one nice clean interface that you just do not get when you are installing TrueNAS scale. TrueNAS is run and managed by IX Systems. They're actually renaming themselves to TrueNAS. So TrueNAS is run by TrueNAS. And the way they make money is they sell systems. And so they don't spend a lot of time making it really, really easy to use third-party systems to see where every single disk is and see all the components. That is not on the top of the priority list. So having something like this where you can actually see from a nice web interface all the things plugged in, everything that's going on, it's really nice to have. It is also directly integrated with ZFS. And this is where you can actually just create a pool directly from this and manage it just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and name it. We are gonna run into one quick issue. Even though I've got a bunch of disks in there, because I am a reviewer and because I'm constantly switching between systems, those disks actually already have MD ADM arrays on them. This is not something that most people will have, but basically these were running in another system and because I'm a reviewer, I'm constantly swapping drives in between. And so one downside with this is, now I actually have to format all these drives for them to show up. I'll go ahead and just do that now and run through it really quickly. For the vast majority of people, I'm assuming you're plugging in either another ZFS array in here, in which case you just import it, or you're plugging in new drives without a file system on them, and more specifically, without a MDADM array on them. And so they'll just show up really nicely here. For everyone else, you can come in here and manually format each of these storage devices. So we can see that there are all these partitions already on there from various systems and I'm just gonna go ahead and start formatting. So now I just went ahead and I stopped the MDADM array. And now we will go ahead and format all of these guys into one big old RAID Z2 array. For our sector size, we're gonna go 4K. And record size, I'll do 256. We've got all of our good custom settings here. And we'll go ahead and create a pool on top. All right, so now after I did that whole process, we were able to build out the pool and everything just comes in here. So then we can also come into this disk tab right here and actually see every single one of our disks and how they are hooked up as well as their ZFS statuses. 
And this is a real advantage of going kind of the Houston side, especially if you are somebody who already kind of knows how to do these ZFS things overall. I will say for people who are not as used to these things, they don't know how to run ZFS commands, they don't know how to blow away arrays, they don't know how to deal with errors, Houston is more difficult to get set up. There are gonna be fewer guides out there and there are some more things you have to deal with. So for example, if you wanna run Samba, you need to make sure you edit the actual SE Linux to allow Samba to work. Otherwise, Samba does not have enough permission. So there, there's a few key things like that, that if you're used to running and building your own file servers, Houston allows you to customize everything you want. You can control everything. They don't hold your hand through it all. It is just a standard Linux, and on top of it, a nice pretty web UI to help you along the way. However, if you're somebody who is not as used to dealing with command line things, does not know about SE Linux, has not really deployed servers before, I do think TrueNAS is going to be easier to run, but you do lose this really nice interface to see where all of your disks are and what's going on. But that's the beauty of a system like this is, you get to pick. There's nothing in here forcing you into one or the other, and so either one of them will work for you. And one nice thing about 45 drives is they also do have a very good support. And if you are using Houston, they're gonna be able to help you out a lot more because it's really their setup. And so that's the 45 Home Lab HL15 2.0. It's an awesome platform that really allows you to grow however you want to and customize whatever you want there. You have great options to choose from for whatever OS you wanna run on there. And it'll just let you throw whatever you want in there. I'm considering making this into a phenomenal flex box by throwing in a GPU in there, having a standalone system that can just run circles around anything else, all nice and pre-built, and really, the sky's the limit for whatever you wanna do there. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below, and you'll hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below, and have a good one, bye.